I was doing all this kind of stuff. A, a sniper fired and hit me right here, right above the right above the knee. And then I got a second shot right through here. Feel it there? Oh yeah. You wanna go down in here? Sure. So so what do you think? This is a uh a German trench? No, it a, uh, no, it American would be trench. round. You just fit a body in it, as it it'd be round. This is this bigger this, than this the... Yeah, yes, yeah, it's twice as big. This holds about three or four guys. But would it be deeper? Deeper, yes, deeper, deeper. Uh, things cut into the walls of the uh, uh, <clears throat> hole and have machine gun bullets in places where you could get at them. You want me to lie down in here? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to lie down in there. <laughs> I know you want to, though. Do you want to? Not really. Not really, okay. Just <laughs> 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 merely suggesting it. Yeah, you that's lie it. Down yeah. There, Donnie. I'm just throwing it, Tom. I'm just throwing it out there, but no. You lie down, Donnie. No, 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 no. So. On the 22nd, when you got wounded, uh, was there snow cover or the snow didn't come in Patchy yet? Patchy snow, the uh, ground was semi-frozen, frozen, frozen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wind was not blowing, but it was nice and sunny. It was beginning to warm up a little bit, but not much. So I took a patrol out of about five guys, I guess at most, and uh, came down the Martisan Hill. You know where the Martisan yes. uh, Museum is? came down that hill and then uh, <clears throat> came across a uh, decomposed granite road that was running in front of us and then turned right and another hundred yards or so was a uh, fork in the road. <clears throat> the rest of the guys were behind me. I had a scout out, number one, a scout next to me, number two. So I'm sure that they observed us as we came down Martyrs on Hill and just waited and then decided uh, <clears throat> what action they'll take after that, waiting for us to, to decide first which fork of the road we're going to take. So I took the left-hand fork. And at that fork of the road, there was a uh, uh, haystack, and it was hard as rock and, and uh, wasn't much good. <clears throat> I sent scout number one up uh, about 50, 60 yards ahead of uh, scout two, who was right next to me. And I noticed machine gun bullets were striking the, the ditch in which we were crawling 50 yards ahead of him. I knew just what, exactly what they're waiting for is to all that patrol get into that ditch and they'll just sweep it from uh, a better point of vantage. And I think there was some, some uh, fire going to come from the uh, uh, left. Where, I don't know. Probably at, uh, at uh, uh, maybe some position on the ground or maybe you had a mobile submachine or a machine gun in a, in a uh, second story. <clears throat> but uh, as I saw the bullets hitting the snow, I told scout number one to call back, or number two, to call back scout number one. We're not gonna go that way. We'll take the other fork of the road. Okay, he left. Now scout number two and me are uh, by ourselves right here. <clears throat> What's happening over here with the other three or four guys, I don't know yet. I didn't ever know. One of them was named John M. Curtis. He came out later to get me. As I was down low, talking to Texiera, uh, a sniper fired and hit me right here, right above the right above the knee. Now I didn't know whether it was broken or not, but it was bleeding. He just nicked, just barely nicked the artery, so it was a little blood coming out. Yeah. I could feel it going down my leg, and. <clears throat> As a result of that, uh, uh, I told the scout number two to give me a shot of morphine. We had 18 syrettes, just in case of a difficulty like this. So he gave me a shot of morphine, and I had to test the leg. So I got up, I put the weight on the leg, and there's two steps I made across the, uh, uh, supposedly made two steps across the uh, decomposed granite road swung my arm up like this and put the weight on here and then I got a second shot right through here. Right here, broke the radius, tore out about six inches of bone. Helmet fell off, submachine gun dropped and I, I took the second step and dove into the uh, 
a haystack. But before that happened, a third shot came by, and I was doing all this kind of stuff, you know. And I spoiled the sniper's sight on me. The third shot went right by my ear, and I heard it crack, because it leaves a vacuum. And it made a really noisy one. That, that one was something. So I drove across the road and, and hit that, that haystack, bounced off of it. I guess I was out there a couple hours before somebody came out and helped me. I needed some help. <laughs> so John M. Curtis came out from way behind me up another ditch, and I saw him as they got up to the haystack because he knew where I was, and I could see him. So <clears throat> I told him to wait right there, and I rolled out on the road. Uh, I, I took the butt of his rifle, he took the muzzle, and we worked our way back. And then from there up to Martizan, and from there to uh, uh, aid station. So that's the way that one went. How far did you have to maneuver back to, to Martizan? Oh, maybe a quarter mile. On your belly? Yeah, crawling. Oh, I was on my back. You are on your back. He was on his uh, uh, stomach for the most part. We were crawling elbow to elbow, and I was pushing with my good leg and my good arm. Was so it took a little blood while at the time? to do. Was there a lot of blood? You put a tourniquet on, or no, no? no. Uh, so they took my boots away from me when I got on the operating table, and a surgeon ran a stick through my arm with the cotton on it and rethyl it and cleaned it up and cleaned up the leg, and then on a stretcher on the floor again. And uh, I told the surgeon, "I'm hungry." Well. He told in order to get that man a peanut butter sandwich. So that's what I had. And while he was doing all of this stuff, I was eating a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> it's probably the best sandwich you ever had yeah. in your life, right? Yeah. From there, Patton broke through and uh, took me to the 121st Field Hospital in Belgium. And there was a nurse there. She'd uh, get a detail of prisoner to take me to the bathroom and bring me back. And when, I, when Patton broke through, uh, she put a great big red ribbon on my chest like that, tied a big knot, and, and then they sent me to the uh, uh, American Embassy in, what was the uh, ribbon? in Paris. What was the ribbon for? Just for fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you were a, a present. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she packaged me. Oh, there you go. Packaged and delivered me <laughs> to the American Embassy. In By Paris? that time, it was infected. They couldn't keep me down and yeah. walking around. I pulled all the stitches out. and, and uh, made a mess there. So they decided after second aid, send me to uh, England. I went to England with this big red ribbon. They called me <laughs> Little Lord Flauntleroy, you know, and teased me because I was in a baby bed for the most part. You pull up the side. And from little, there to an American little red hospital. What? Huh? Little red what? Little Lord Flauntleroy. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Some English character. <laughs> so AKA from, Tom Rice. Yeah. So from there we had to lie at detention in our bed with the uh, 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 sheets under our armpits and the blanket under our armpits. And the surgeon came by and looked at the uh, x-rays and, and uh, made a decision. One day I wasn't in my uh, bed and one day he came in wanted to where the devil I was. And I was down in the ante room uh, ironing my shirt with a bad arm, you know. So he came in and started questioning me. And, and, uh, <clears throat> He got a little deep in questions, and so I, I let fly with some sulfuric acid words that he probably has heard before. Right, right. Yeah, you know, and, and he said he's going to ZI me. Well, ZI me, uh, to ZI a person meant going to send him back to the United States. So I told him I wouldn't go. So he, he finally concluded, I'll, I'll get you out of here in three days. <laughs> so there I went to the repo depot. Right, right. Yeah. Most that guys would want to have to go back to the states. No, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go back to the states. No. You wanted to go. Sure, join they your were outfit. up in they were in Birch's Garden. Right. So I met them there in Birch's Garden. Right. And uh, in the headquarters, SS headquarters, I picked up a copy of Mein Kampf, a soldier's edition of Mein Kampf. I don't know if I showed that to you or not. No. No. Yeah. No, original, first edition, I'm sure. It's worth about sixty bucks. So, I'll, give you, I'll give you 70. That's yeah, right. So here we are. Yeah. I should build a fire here. Well, we can build a fire here if you like. Yeah. We can lay down and right, lay down, have a, up. And, I mean, <laughs> we can uh, rock to sleep or get stoned to death. I'm surrounded by enemies. There you go. He's calling you out. I'm down. All right.
There you go. There you go. Uh, what do you think? This, this is great. What do you think? Yeah, we need a little hay and and some uh, pine needles and things on us, and we're good. Well, here's a well, here's a pine yeah, cone yeah. you can put on you. I got a pine cone too. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you stay warm when you're laying in the foxhole? Uh, dig it deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Dig and, it deeper. And, and, and put hay in it. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's like a nice like insulation. Yeah. yeah. Surround yourself as much as you can with hay. Because we didn't have anything like uh, mittens or gloves or uh, overcoat. I didn't have anything like that. So how did some guys get the overcoat and, and some guys I guess they, they, absconded, they absconded it from the 106th Division who was retreating through Bastogne. They were yelling, here they come, here they come. And they said, well, we told them, okay, if they're coming, give us your ammunition and your rifle. Right, right, right. So right. we picked up equipment from them as they came in. And all the tanks were on the sidewalks right up against the buildings and pointing in the direction which they were running from. The sniper. Yeah, watch them. Yeah. It's actually warmer down here than it is up there. Oh, this is where you got shot. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. It's pretty Did bad. it go in and it go out or yeah, just went it, in? It, yeah, it went in and out. And hit an artery, a little bit of an artery there. Oh, yeah. I see it here. So this is the entry spot here? Yeah. No, it's probably the uh, exit spot. So which but, one? This one's the yeah, entry, this yeah, is the exit? Yeah. You say you lost a lot of bone there as well, right? No, it didn't hit the bone no, there. No, no. Oh, that was your forearm. Yes, it sure Scars of war. <laughs> They're healed, but... Yeah. And then the other one up here. There it is, see? Yeah. Yeah, feel it there? Oh, oh, yeah. It went in this side, came out this side, continued on. Then the third shot right by my ear. Lucky you missed that one. Yeah. See that scar right there. So, pull pronation, supination with the left. Yeah. That's all I can get on the right. There's the bone. Do you have a rod in there or anything? No, nothing, nothing, huh? No, they just manipulated the bones and let it heal. So no problems after the war at all with your leg and your arm? No, 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 no problem not, not at all. Really, it didn't stop you from running. No, that's what that one of the reasons why I continued on. Yeah, is to develop some strength here. Yeah. So we did that for 51 years. It's not bad. No, no, it was fun. Well, I think we can just stay here all night. Yeah. We got nowhere to go. I'm gonna throw my arms, throw my hands in my pockets. Got a joke? Yeah. And then one, uh, the, the 21st, some guy came by with a, a big bucket, I don't know which, or a, a insulated uh, canister about that big, and it had mashed potatoes in it. And he said, open your hands, and I did, and I put them in, he slapped in two great big ladles full of mashed potatoes. Into your hands? Yeah, and I didn't eat them for a bit until they cooled off, because I wanted the warmth of oh, my hands. Oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't, and then I, I licked my fingers afterwards. <laughs> then I used a spoon to to uh, uh, eat with and never cleaned the spoon so that later on, in a day or two, I could lick it and, and taste it. Still get a little flavor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's the idea. I am Tom Rice. Uh, again, I am Tom Rice.